Mitchell is averaging yeah. almost 16 yards per carry. If Devin Singletary, who's averaging 3.9 <laughs> yards per carry, can rush for 150 yards, what on earth is Keaton Mitchell going to do? So I did play his prop 36 and a half over. I think they're going to give him the ball. More... I mean, that's that's a question. Mm -hmm. He didn't get any so. touches last week. I'm like, he's awesome. He touches the ball. Yeah. Explosive plays happen. And then they sat him. He he played four snaps in the entire second half on Sunday. He had one touch. And Harbaugh mm -hmm. comes out. He's like, oh, he's going to play more. He's going to play more. Okay. Why didn't he play this past Sunday? You're supposed to be the smarter Believe organization. Believe it when I, I see it. it. I didn't get it. Yeah. Man. Like, I, it's a really good play, Aaron. I agree with you. I'm probably going to do something with Mitchell. I'm, I'm figuring that out, but I'm frustrated by the organization because they don't seem to want to get him on the field when they lack playmakers. Yeah. How you can't maybe have they too learn, many or maybe of them. exactly. Maybe they're trying to keep like. They don't want to have like too many people to know about it or be expecting it every time. I have no idea. But if you don't get him the ball, I'm going to be so mad tomorrow. <laughs> I'm very I, angry. We're going to go back to the group text and then the profanity <laughs> will pour like wine. That's how this is going to go down. I know it. And it's fine. I'll be pouring wine during the game. If you're forcing me, I would probably do something with the Ravens. But the full game is worrisome divisional matchup this this number landed on a field goal last time they played and just you know flat out baltimore they've been awesome in the first half they've been great starting games they have a phenomenal run game and they can't close games does it make any sense to me aaron you, you would think the way that they are built a smart organization smart head coach great running game strong defense they're built to close games, and they haven't been able to. Mm -hmm. That's how they're blowing these these ones. Yeah, it's it's interesting. So the Ravens and actually the Bengals too, they both tend to start fast. But specifically the Ravens, they just run out of steam. It's very head-scratching to me. Uh, Mike McDonald, the D coordinator, has been really good. You mentioned Jamar Chase. He had six targets, caught five of them. But I think if the Bengals are going to find a way to stay in this game, they've got to get him more targets. I think it's got to be like in the 10 to 15 range, which he's had a few times this season. I was looking at over seven and a half receptions for him. It's plus 120. I'm only looking at props here. I am thinking since both these teams do tend to start fast, should I look at a first half? over oof, 22 and a half in a division game also the Bengals if they want to stay in this in this division I mean they can't lose this game they hate to call it a must win it's kind of corny but it it really is for the Bengals isn't it I mean I expect this to be a close game oh, yeah. but I think the the Ravens can afford to lose this one and they're not totally out of it where the Bengals they have to win this game in my opinion maybe not for the playoffs but certainly for the division Oh, 100%. Couldn't agree with you more, Aaron. Like, the, the, the Bengals have to win this one because, first off, they already played the Ravens and lost. So then you're losing out on tiebreakers as well as far as head-to-head -head matchups go. Yeah, the Bengals have to win this game if they have any shot in the division. And I don't know if it matters in terms of motivation or anything like that, but you see the, the quarterback injury with the Browns. How does that not give you a little pep in your step if you're the Bengals? Knowing full well that, okay, the Steelers – dare I say they're a little fortunate to be where they are just even contending for the division title so those two teams right there that look flawed in some way shape or form and the other one you're going up against and if you beat them and you improve to six and four okay well now you already have the momentum that you've had with Joe Burrow playing better and better as he's getting healthier so that really helps the defense is certainly getting better and adding Hendrickson is huge uh, just in terms of that defensive uptick 100% the Bengals have to win this game. So how much does this matter in terms of motivation, you know, especially for a short week? I I don't I, I don't know. Hard to kind of quantify that. But I definitely would say that I would not be surprised if the Bengals try, say, a couple of trick plays or they try some unusual wrinkles offensively because they know full well that they have to use them in a game like this just to kind of stay in contention. At the same time, though, when we talk about props, 
some folks are throwing out the idea of Trenton Irwin as sort of being that extra receiver, uh, that extra outlet, perhaps. I would not go there. I think he was perhaps a good story at one point, but now I'd probably go under as far as uh, any plays I would make on him. This is going to be about the stars to me. And, and Aaron, I couldn't agree with you more as far as that's concerned. The, the stars who are still out there at wide receiver, those are the ones who are going to have to have mighty contributions to be able to win this football game. Is there any value on the board as far as title futures? Top five, five undefeated teams. You've got Michigan on the outside, Oregon and Texas. Same thing with Alabama sitting at number eight. We know about the potential path there. Uh, do, do you like any of these teams on the outside looking in right now? Yeah, I, I, I'm going to – the third shortest odds to win this thing is Alabama Crimson Tide. Now, that could be because liability is built in. As a matter of fact, they're plus 150 to make the playoff. But, listen, I was watching Joel Klatt last night, and he was like, oh, I can't believe they're going to do this and figure out a way to put Alabama in this thing. When have you known a one-loss SEC champion not to make the college football playoff? And I've said all <laughs> season long that I did not think – that Georgia was going to be an undefeated SEC champion this year. And this is really Nick Saban's best work. He came into this season telling people the way it starts is not going to be the way it finishes. That's why he was so skeptical about naming a starting quarterback. And now look at Jalen Milrow. He is working himself into Heisman contention. Nick Saban is doing the job of his career with this team right here. I, I when, he, when they were 14-1, to 1, I told people, they, they, they coming. And like prime time. And now they're six to one. And pretty soon after next weekend, it's going to be a big debate. But they're going to be in the college football playoff. It's going to be two mm -hmm. SEC teams. And that's going to leave somebody real upset. Uh, probably either a Florida State or Oregon. But the truth of the matter is Alabama, they're going to beat Georgia. And they'll be in this thing. Give me the Crimson Tide to win the national championship. I didn't think I'd be saying that. You, you'd think based on everyone's commentary that it's a done deal, right? Oregon State's favored in the market and, uh, you know, there's no way Washington's going to run the table. I'm starting to think, though, I, I think the game is a true coin flip. You can make a case for either side, so I don't have a lot of conviction on the side. But I do wonder if the time for Washington to lose was during that post-Oregon lull where there was rumors of the flu and there was rumors of a Penix rib injury and they nearly lost to Arizona State and Stanford. Like, those were the games they were supposed to lose. Now, they look great against USC. They put up 52. They get past Utah in a seven-point win, but probably should have been more than that. Now they go to Oregon State. Like, what if Washington got over the hump and they're back to healthy and this high-powered offense can test a poor Oregon State secondary that struggled against any plus passing offense they've seen this year? I... I'm not rushing to lay Oregon State as a favorite in this one. I bet the over myself because I think there's a case for both offenses to really have a strong afternoon. Potential rain in the forecast in Corvallis definitely hurts the Washington side. But I just wonder if this market – like it's almost like they're writing off Washington completely with Oregon State <laughs> now laying two and a half. This, if this gets to three, I'm going to have to play Washington. I, I don't know if it will ever get there, but if it does, I'm going to have to play Washington. 